Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev and in this video we're going to be doing something slightly differently. So this is not going to be a tutorial. This is going to be a discussion about how I passed 70767 Microsoft certification implementing a data warehouse using SQL. So I'm just going to go through what resources are used, uh, some tips for the exam itself and also the details of what the certification itself actually covers. Don't forget if you are new to the channel do subscribe, I have lots of videos on business intelligence and working with data and if you do like the video I'd appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button as well. So we're just going to go through the details of what the exam actually covers. Uh, now this isn't extensive but I will provide some links uh, in the details below so you can go and check that out. So the main areas of the exam are designing, implementing and maintaining a data warehouse, extracting, transforming and loading data, so working with SSIS, and building data quality solutions, so that is covering areas on data quality services and master data solutions as well. Also, when the exam was originally published in a beta phase, uh, there was some inclusion of Azure and Polybase, uh, but they were later removed after that stage. But the exam does touch upon some Azure questions as well. So always expect that there will be questions outside of the scope of the requirements. So the preparation resources that I used was there's a very useful links provided on MS SQL tips. Uh, I can't remember the individual who actually provides them, but I will put a link, as I say, to that in the description uh, below. So that provides links to um, any SQL resources, so any articles that will be a useful read for the exam, and videos as well. So any videos on Microsoft Virtual Academy, uh, he also provides details on the recommended reading list, so training kits that you can go through, and also details of any courses that you could take for this exam as well. Now, although this exam was aimed at SQL 2016, I actually had the training kit for SQL 2012 lying around, and that seemed to be a lot more extensive than the SQL 2016 version. The training kit I actually had for 2012 was in the region of 700 pages spread across 20 different chapters and the new training kit that's come out, the, the green books, that was only something like 300 pages and covered three chapters. Uh, so I haven't actually had a look at any of the, the newer training kits aimed at SQL 2016. If you have, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. From the reviews I've read on Amazon, uh, there seems to be a lot of mistakes. And there's always going to be issues within the training kits provided. So at some points I was literally pulling my hair out with this training kit of what it was telling me to do. So always make sure you look at the errata. So that's available online of any corrections. And also it does help because you learn the wrong way to do things in some scenarios as well. I also had uh, the SQL Server 2012 integration services, um, so this exam is based heavily around integration services. So I thought I'd get that kit alongside as well, so I went through that. There's a lot of stuff in there that covers some questions on Oracle as well, so it, it, although it's called SQL Server, there are some things on there for Oracle as well. And then I also use the Measure Up practice exams. I find these are quite closely related to uh, the Microsoft certifications themselves. Again, you do find some mistakes within the questions where they may have multiple answers that look exactly the same and you select one and they say that's the incorrect one. So unfortunately it's not perfect but I do find that's one of the best resources I've found um, to do practice exams especially for the Microsoft certifications as well. So if you've got any feedback on any other uh, practice exam providers, let me know in the comments below. Obviously, I don't use any exam dumps or anything like that because that would remove the certification, so I'm not a fan of those. 
And I know it can be quite frustrating when you try and Google practice certifications that there's pages and pages of these exam dumps that come up to try and sell you information. There's two reasons I don't like to do that. One is because if you are discovered that you've been using exam dumps that will remove your certification and you're not able to take any more in the future. And two, when I take a certification, I also like to be able to know that I can use that within a real world. So there's no point passing these certifications without the knowledge that you can go into a position or into a company and carry out this work. So I'll move on now to some tips uh, for the exam. The obvious one is always read the question. So I find with the Microsoft certifications, uh, they, the questions tend to be worded uh, a bit funny so you have to pay particular attention to some of the key words in there looking out for things like not um, rather than just jumping on the correct answer I have to slow myself down a lot when I look out for just buzzwords I actually have to make sure I read the question correctly and then also rule out the incorrect answers straight away. So there's usually one or two answers that have no relation to the question whatsoever. They're usually in a different area. So rule those two answers out. Go through the question again and select the best question that fits. I find with the Microsoft ones, they tend to ask the question, but they don't really provide you with enough information. I will be able to rule out a couple of answers and then my uh, immediate answer to that is well it depends has this been done or hasn't it depending on the best answer I choose uh, also with this uh, certification which I haven't seen before was the first 10 to 15 questions were yes or no so they gave you a scenario and then gave you an answer and then said does this is this the best scenario to choose is this the best answer and they were just simply yes or no, uh, and I think there were a couple of multiple choice in there as well. Um, but with these questions, they couldn't actually be modified, so you could go back. Normally, you can flag a question and then come back to it after you've gone through the entire exam or any other point. But these questions, once you've actually chosen the answer and click next, you couldn't actually return to them. Uh, which brings me on to my next point as well, which is flag the questions that you're unsure of to review at the end. So some questions you will get that you definitely know the answer to. There's no question about it. That is the answer. And then others you will be just unsure of. Uh, and what I like to do, I don't like to waste too much time when I'm initially going through the exam. I like to make sure I've got all the questions covered. So if you don't know the answer and it's taking some time and you're starting to panic, just flag that question and then move on. I was also provided with a little um, sort of mini whiteboard that I could write on. Um, so I always made sure to write down the question number and the two possible answers that I was looking at. And the benefit of that is as well, you might have a question in that area later on that gives you a key to the answer. Or it might just refresh something in the back of your mind that will enable you to answer that question correctly. Uh, and then always cover the exam topics and more. So I went over the sort of general exam topics earlier on in the video. Like I say, I'll provide a link that will take you to the Microsoft website that will provide a comprehensive list of exactly what the exam is going to cover. but make sure you always extend your knowledge uh, a bit further. As I mentioned previously, I was actually looking at the SQL Server 2012 kit for this. Um, so one thing I looked into were changes in SQL Server 2016, and there had been a lot of development work, particularly around column store indexes, so I had to look into those a lot outside of the training kit because they had been further developed, um, and I would have chose some of the incorrect answers compared to SQL 2012 as well. Um, so there's always going to be questions that are outside the scope or what you've revised. So in my training kit, for example, there was um, not really any um, sort of details on server configuration or a RAID configuration. And I did have some questions on those as well. Also, just picking up on the measure up practice exams as well. So I forgot to mention this earlier. 
Uh, I think I paid about £70 for a download version and that gives me three licenses so if you're looking to take the certification within a group you can split that cost amongst you. Uh, and they also offer a discount if you're buying multiple exams. So I think if you buy three exams, uh, three practice exams, you can get uh, about 30% discount. And they also offer some uh, discounts. I think on the 20th of the month, they usually offer a 20% discount, which is what I went for as well. As always, don't forget to check out my other videos. If you are interested in taking this certification, let me know what videos you'd like to see. I do have some currently uh, some integration services tutorials on my channel. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification button to be made aware of when I do upload videos. And if you have enjoyed the video, uh, feel free to share it as well. Thanks a lot for watching.